What is up, my friends? So, Suicide Squad, the sequel, the reboot, the reimagining? What do we call it? Well, this is James Gunn's attempt at Suicide Squad. As you know, 2016 Suicide Squad was pretty much a miss for the most part. It is enjoyable in a guilty pleasure way, but there is a lot of like drama with that. I'll make a video one of these days talking about it all. But let's talk about James Gunn's latest attempt. So after the whole controversy with James Gunn, when he was taken off of Disney and then Warner Brothers picked him up, and it was just a weird time during that time, trust me. I don't want to talk about it in this video because we're here just to talk about the ending. But it, it was a weird time, and now we have a Guardians 3 by James Gunn and a Suicide Squad by James Gunn, two different entities, and here we are. So this one pretty much starts off with Amanda Waller forming Task Force X once again in an effort to destroy a prison lab in South America. Now, they aren't told exactly why or what's going on like in too much details. As we all know, Amanda Waller doesn't really like to go like that because, you know, secrets better find out later. So we find out later. We'll get to that in a bit. Harley actually ends up being captured during this mission and a couple of the members actually do die. Later on, of course, this becomes a rescue mission as well to get Harley and they end up discovering through the Thinker, who is actually one of the people involved in all of this, that there is an extraterrestrial being called Starro. Starro, of course, being one of the first villains that the Justice League went up against. And that he is being held captive and they are performing experiments not only on him, but on also civilians that are under his spore control. They end up finding out actually that the American government has been behind all of this as well and that they actually funded this decades ago and have been keeping this a secret for so long. Rick Flagg becomes furious about this and he tries to say that he is going to expose it all but Peacemaker being who Peacemaker is is like, nah, we're keeping this underground and he ends up killing Rick Flagg actually. We end up seeing Star will be released after the laboratory falls apart and he actually goes on to enslave all of the city. Waller tells the team that their mission is over and they should come back. They refuse to leave the city and leave Starro to wreak havoc. Waller becomes furious about this because she, she don't like people being um, against her. So she's like, I'm going to kill you all by making the things explode in your head. Her helpers actually don't want this to happen either. So they pretty much take her down and the team is able to go ahead and stop Starro. They end up killing it and then they actually save everybody and then they use the drive that had all of the information about what the Americans were doing with South America and Starro and use it as leverage against Waller and be like, you let us be free or this gets out. She actually ends up agreeing and we see the squad be free. Then we get our post credits and after credits where we actually see that Weasel, one of the members that we thought actually had died, is actually still alive and also Peacemaker who seemed to have been uh, dead is actually still alive and Waller's team talks about having other missions for him as well. Cue in the Peacemaker show we're getting for HBO Max. So pretty much a very straightforward film I think here and one that tries to just stay away from the previous film and I think that's for the best especially how polarizing it was. Um, of course David Ayer I think should get his vision uh, brought into the light we'll see if that ever does happen but i thought that this was actually something that was well done and i think that this sets up so much for the future of what could be coming uh for this franchise as well as the dcu we know that dc is always shining brighter when they make stories that aren't interlaced as opposed to how marvel does their stuff where everything connects i think dc does have more of an advantage with these stories as we saw with its previous films such as shazam also with um, Birds of Prey, and I think that this is the latest in that um, category of stories that don't necessarily have to tie into a grander scheme and still deliver a pretty good experience as well. So this was done perfectly, and I'm pretty excited to see that as well. I think Weasel and Peacemaker, at what, like for sure Peacemaker, we are going to see him in the show. Weasel, I definitely see him coming back as well. And I think that that is going to be uh, very interesting to see if we actually will see uh, Peacemaker sort of be a leader of now for the squad. Um, especially because I think that now that we're seeing um, Rick Flagg be gone, and I think we won't see any of the other characters really tr come back to all of this, especially after being able to escape from it. I think Peacemaker in his show will definitely be doing the missions that the Suicide Squad does in, in that 
uh, time span of the show, maybe recruiting a new team with Waller and definitely setting up for a sequel to this. Uh, I think that people really want to see John Cena be a forefront for this, and this could definitely be his Justice League of sorts. And I think that the way to tell the story through the show will be an interesting one if Warner Brothers can pull it off and then ultimately have a team up by the end into the next movie for Suicide Squad is what I see going on here because I think they definitely um, want Peacemaker to be that leader of sorts that there really wasn't before. So I, I'm excited to see that. Uh, Idris Elba might return according to rumors in the Peacemaker show, maybe a small appearance. I definitely would want to see um, a rematch there. And yeah, definitely um, one that a movie that definitely uh, many of us weren't expecting, especially after what happened in 2016. I really believe that Suicide Squad was going to be um, let go for a bit and they were going to not try to focus on that. But I think that them coming back and uh, definitely uh, a redemption of sorts for both um, the franchise as well as James Gunn was something that made this movie something special, I guess you could say. But what are your thoughts on this movie? Are you excited to see what comes next? What do you think about Peacemaker's show as well? I'm going to talk more about that in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. But as always, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Make sure you check out the video on the left. I did a video on Control Z, a show on Netflix out right now that I think is pretty good, so definitely check that out. We have Donda coming out later tonight. Probably do a live reaction or sorts, or get my quick reaction video out as I always do with albums. So make sure you turn on the bell for notifications to know when that drops. And as always, that's going to do it for me. Peacemaker video coming out tomorrow. Um, and then I have a Suicide Squad sequel a theories of what we could see definitely as well and how this could also give us more of a broader connection to what DC wants to do in the future with its films as well. So got a lot of videos as I said this week is the last week where I'll be doing voiceovers next week new setup all that good stuff so it's going to be good so um, yeah, yeah we'll see I'm trying to make this as best as I can give you the best experience be the one and only um like stop destination for all the stuff you love as always that is going to do it for me stay safe stay positive hey if you're still listening I appreciate you. Check out the video on the left. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter, down below, TikTok, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.